Hello and welcome everyone. Today I will start with the part 5 which is updating the pages of the previous solution that we have built so far and these are based on a few articles written by Microsoft uh, ASP.NET core people led by Rick Anderson and if you like uh, the video please subscribe to my channel and give your likes and uh, so in the attached screenshot you can see that what I need to say is that we so far has a good start to the movie app but the presentation isn't ideal we don't want to see the time in the image attached image and the release date should be release date two words so what we do is we update the generated code so we open the movie.cs file movie class under models slash movies and add some extra code and then column All right. So now right click on the red squiggly line and quick action and refactorings. So we we'll see that you know we'll have to import this using statement. So it has added system dot component model dot data annotations and then we right click this column type name quick action and refactorings and import this reference you using system dot component model dot data annotations dot schema right now this column type name equals within double quotes decimal brackets 18 comma 2 this is a data annotation and this is required so entity framework co can correctly map price to the currency in the database and so we have now this completed model we'll cover data annotations in the next tutorial the display attribute specifies what to display for the name of a field in this case release date instead of release date as one word the data type attribute specifies the type of data here it is date date so the time information stored in the field isn't displayed now we'll run the application hover over the edit field we see that you know there is a query string HTTPS localhost colon the port number slash movies slash edit question mark ID equals 14 the edit details and delete links are generated by anchor tag helper in the index.cshtml file so let's see the index.cshtml file so these are the anchor tags tag helpers enable server-side code to participate in creating and rendering HTML elements in razor files in the preceding code the anchor tag helper dynamically generates the HTML href attributes from the razor page the root is relative so this is the relative root the ASP page and the root ID ASP root ID these are dynamically generated so if we go back to this application and 
view the source you will see that it is it is a section of the view source shows like this so this dy dynamically generated links pass the movie ID with a query string this is the query string now we'll next we'll update the edit details and delete razor pages to use another notation which will soon follow so details we update with the page directive with at page within double quotes and curly braces starting id colon int we'll do the similar things with edit so i have okay so so the simple at page directive is replaced with at page within double quotes id colon int similarly for this one save all now if we run the application once again go to the RP movie link now hover over this we can see that you know it the query string is replaced by edit slash 14 that is the ID and if we look into the sub page source it tells likewise okay so a request to the page with the ID colon int route template that doesn't include the integer will return in an HTTP 404 not found error for example if it is HTTP colon HTTPS colon front slash front slash localhost colon 44338 slash movie slash details and if we don't uh, pass the int it will return an HTTP 404 error. Now, to make the ID optional, we can append question mark to the root constraint. So, how do we do that? Is you know, if we put question mark over here and uh, question mark wherever we have changed the page directive. then this passing the ID will be optional next is posting and binding review now we'll examine the edit.cshtml.cs file so I'll just stop the application this one when an HTTP get request is made to the movies slash edit page for example HTTP s colon front slash front slash localhost colon the port number slash movies slash edit slash to the on get async this is the on get async method that we are talking about it fetches the movie from the database and returns the page method this page method renders the edit.cshtml razor page this one the pages movies edit.cshtml file which is this one contains the model directive this is the model directive which makes the movie model available on the page the edit form is displayed with the values from the movie now when the movies edit page is posted 
when it is posted on post async is called the form values on the page are bound to the movie property bind property enables model binding so if you go back to this so public movie movie get set is the property yeah this one bind property so this bind property it enables the model model binding as I told if there are errors in the model state for example release date cannot be converted to a date the form is posted again with the submitted values if there are no model errors the movie is saved the HTTP get methods in the index create and delete razor pages follow a similar pattern the HTTP post on post async this method in the create razor pages follow a similar pattern to the on post async method in the edit edit razor page okay so that's it thank you very much if you like the video please subscribe to it